Hello Flight Simmers and welcome back to Alpha Hotel Flight Simulator Training. In this instrument training quick look video we'll take a look at determining your diversion fuel also sometimes called your bingo fuel. This is a situation you run into in real life fairly frequently especially if you're operating in and out of busy terminal areas. So here's a pretty common scenario where you need to figure this out. You're en route to your destination that's near a busy Class B airport and there's weather moving in. ATC advises all aircraft on frequency that arrivals to that terminal area have been halted and to expect holding. A few minutes later, ATC gives you a holding clearance and you enter the holding pattern just like we learned about in the last video. ATC gives you an expect further clearance time or EFC time that's 45 minutes from now but admits they're not confident that's when arrivals will resume. Obviously, we can't hold up here forever. At some point, if we can't get to our destination, we're going to have to go elsewhere. But how long can we hold, and when do we need to leave the holding pattern and proceed to our alternate so that we still have an adequate fuel reserve when we land there? We need to determine what's called our diversion fuel, also sometimes referred to in the industry as bingo fuel, because when you hit that fuel level, bingo, it's time to go to your alternate. First, let's talk a little bit about alternates. In the real world, we'll use what's called the 123 rule to determine if we need to file an alternate. This means that we need to file an alternate if the weather at our destination from one hour before to one hour after our estimated time of arrival will be less than a 2,000 foot ceiling and less than three miles visibility. Basically, if the weather is going to be anywhere near IFR, you'll need to file an alternate. It's also wise to file an alternate any time thunderstorms that could shut down arrivals or departures are forecast to be at or near your destination. And it's also a good idea to file an alternate if there are other things that could stop air traffic uh, in the area's non-weather factors such as VIP movement. There are some weather requirements as to what you can file as an alternate airport in order to file an airport as an alternate. Uh, the weather needs to be a ceiling of at least 600 feet and a visibility of at least one statute mile at your estimated time of arrival at that alternate. If the airport has a usable precision approach, that would, this would be something like an ILS that has a glide slope. If it does not have an ILS or a precision approach, but it does have a usable non-precision approach, then the ceiling and visibility needs to be forecast to be at least 800 foot and one statute mile at your estimated time of arrival. You can also use an airport that does not have an instrument approach. In order to do this, the weather needs to be forecast to allow you to descend from the MEA down to the airport under basic VFR. It's also wise to not file an airport as an alternate if there are thunderstorms forecast at or near the airport at your ETA there, or if you're aware of any non-weather factors that could cause a delay against something like VIP movement. It's also worth noting that just because you file an airport as an alternate in your flight plan doesn't mean you have to use it as your alternate while en route. If conditions make another airport look like a better alternative than what you had planned or filed, all you need to do is let ATC know that that's where you'd like to go. In fact, ATC generally is not aware of what airports you filed as your alternate in the real world. When the time comes to divert, you'll have to let them know where you want to go. So let's assume we've selected a good alternate, so now we just need to determine our diversion or bingo fuel and figure out how long we can stay in the holding pattern. In order to determine our diversion fuel, we need to know a few things. We need to determine our fuel burn from our present position to our destination. We need to determine our fuel burn from the destination to the alternate. We need to determine how much IFR reserve fuel we need. We need to determine how much unusable fuel is on board the aircraft. And we need to decide if we want any extra fuel for delays, radar vectors, and missed approaches. This is by, determined by us as the PIC. When we add all of these values together, we get our diversion or our bingo fuel. And then to determine how long we can stay in the holding pattern, we subtract the diversion fuel or bingo fuel from our current fuel on board to determine our fuel remaining and the time we have available for holding. So let's look at a practical example of how this would work. 
Uh, let's assume that we are planning a IFR flight between Kirksville Regional Airport uh, in northern Missouri down to the Kansas City Downtown Airport or the Charles B. Wheeler Downtown Airport. And let's assume that we're making this flight in the 172. Either model is fine. Uh, the identifiers for those two airports are going to be Kilo, Kilo India Romeo Kilo and Kilo Mike Kilo Charlie. The route of flight that we'll file will be Kirksville Airport direct to the Kirksville VOR and then the Bramer 7 arrival uh, into Kansas City downtown. We'll assume that we have filed at an altitude of 6,000 and we'll assume that we uh, fueled the aircraft to 56 gallons. In other words, we're taking two full tanks of fuel in the Cessna 172 today. So we make a normal departure out of Kirksville, go direct to the VOR and begin to fly the arrival down to uh, Kansas City downtown and as we approach the Bramer VOR we'll assume that we hear that there are storms hitting the Kansas City metro area and all arrivals have been suspended and so they give us holding instructions at Bramer VOR. We will assume that we burned 2.2 gallons on our departure out of Kirksville. We took this directly out of the time, fuel, and distance to climb chart uh, from the Cessna 172 manual. That's how much it takes to get up to 6,000 feet. And then we'll assume that we burned six gallons en route uh, from Kirksville to Bramer. It's about 67 miles. And that should, at our average uh, fuel burn of 10 gallons per hour from the pilot operating handbook, that would be about six gallons. So once we enter the holding pattern at Bramer, we arrived there with 47.8 gallons or just shy of 48 gallons of fuel in the tanks. So to determine our time from our present position at Bramer down to Kansas City downtown, first of all, we're going to make the assumption that they are landing 1-9. That's what the prevailing winds usually favor out there. Uh, so we'll assume this is kind of a standard day. Uh, then we need to determine the distance from uh, Bramer down to Kansas City downtown. Uh, so we would fly, if we're flying the arrival and using runway 19, we would fly down to Don's intersection and then we would get radar vectors. Uh, so there are a couple ways we can determine the distance from Don's down to the airport. Uh, you could just put it in a map program and measure it that way or just get out a map and measure it that way. Uh, luckily with this uh, particular airport and this approach, this actually gives us the distance on the approach plate for the RNAV to runway 19. Uh, so you can see Bramer up here, it tells us 10 miles from Bramer to Dons, uh, which is also on the arrival, and then from Dons out to Covery, which is the initial approach fix uh, for this RNAV approach, and is also incidentally the uh, one of the initial approach fixes for the uh, ILS approach to runway 9. So you could do that uh, for either approach. Uh, depending on which one you want to use, is 25 miles. Then it's 7.1 miles uh, down to this next intersection, and then there's 2.8, 1.2, 0.8, 0 0.9 miles uh, to get us to the runway. If we add all that up, it comes up to just under 48 miles. I rounded up to 50 miles to uh, account for radar vectors and that sort of thing. Uh, so we'll use a distance of 50 nautical miles. We'll assume we're doing 115 uh, knots as our true airspeed. We'll assume this is a zero wind condition. So that's also our ground speed. So to travel that distance is going to take us 27 minutes or about 0.45 hours. We multiply that times our uh, in route fuel burn of six gallons per hour. And that gives us five gallons of fuel that we're going to burn to get from Bramer to Kansas City Airport and shoot the approach. So our next step is to determine our time and fuel burn from our destination to our alternate. So we'll assume that we have filed uh, Higginsville Industrial Municipal Airport, which has an identifier of Kilo Hotel India Golf. And uh, again, what we, we don't have to use what we file uh, if we determine that uh, something looks better in terms of weather or uh, it's a little closer and that would be more advantageous, we can actually divert to that airport instead. But we'll assume that the weather looks really good here. Uh, all the weather is going to miss this airport. It has two good approaches. The weather is good enough to go in. So if we make the decision to divert, we have decided that we're going to go here. Uh, so the distance between Kansas City downtown and uh, this airport is 43 nautical miles. So we'll divide our distance by our ground speed of 115, and that will give us uh, 23 minutes or about 0.4 hours, which will be multiply times our fuel burn of 10 gallons an hour, gives us about four gallons of fuel burn to get to our alternate. 
So the next step is to calculate our IFR reserve fuel. This is pretty straightforward. The FARs say that we need 45 minutes or three quarters of an hour of IFR reserve fuel at a minimum. Uh, so that means that with our 10 gallon per hour fuel burn, we need 7.5 gallons of reserve fuel. And then we add any unusable fuel. We get this from the book in the 172. It says there's three gallons of unusable fuel or 1.5 gallons in each tank. And then we add any delay fuel that we feel we would like to add. Uh, most pilots and most flight operations departments uh, use delay fuel between 15 and 30 minutes. For this example, we'll go ultra conservative and we'll add 30 minutes or half an hour, which at our fuel burn is gonna give us five gallons of delay fuel. Then we add all of those things together and that gives us our diversion fuel or our bingo fuel. So here's a quick look at how that tallies up. We need uh, five gallons of gas to get from Bremer VOR through the arrival and to Kansas City downtown. We need four gallons of gas to then get from Kansas City downtown out to Higgins Airport. We then need 7.5 gallons of required IFR fuel reserve. Uh, we have three gallons of unusable fuel on board the aircraft, and then we decided to put five gallons of uh, possible delay fuel on there. So that adds up to a total of 24.5 gallons. Uh, so our bingo fuel is 24.5 gallons. That works out to be uh, in the Cessna 172 about 12.25 or 12 and a quarter gallons per tank. And once we reach that amount, when we get down to 24 and a half gallons of fuel on board the aircraft, we really don't have a choice at that point. We need to proceed to our alternate. So some of you may be looking at that bingo fuel number and going, wow, that's a lot of gas. And it is, it's almost half of the amount of fuel that we can even put on the airplane. Uh, but let's look at it from a different perspective with the fuel that we have on board, how long can we hold? And in order to determine our holding fuel, we need to subtract the bingo or the diversion fuel from the fuel that we have on board the aircraft. So again, we took off a of full tanks. So we burned about an hour's worth of gas getting out to Bramer intersection. So we said we had 47.8 gallons of fuel on board when we reached Bramer intersection and entered the holding pattern. We'll subtract our 24 and a half uh, pounds of diversion fuel or bingo fuel. And that means that we have 23.3 gallons of fuel on board the aircraft that can, we can use just for holding, just to delay and wait and see if we can get into Kansas City. And if we divide that by our 10 gallons per hour of uh, fuel burn, then that means we have 139 minutes or just a little over two hours uh, of fuel that we can use to hold. So we can hold for close to two hours, over, over two hours actually, before we need to divert to our alternate. So we still have plenty of time, plenty of fuel on board to take a significant delay uh, and still be able to get to our destination. So that concludes this video. Hopefully it's given you the knowledge you need to determine how long you can stay in a holding pattern and when you need to leave for your alternate airport. As always, if you've enjoyed the content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to be alerted to new content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And excuse me, it looks like I need to divert.